at these graphs, when we look at this, you realize that the exponential function is friendly or not. By friendly, I mean is it defined on all real numbers? Is there any restriction on, on the exponential function? Or is it I can plug in anything I want? What do you think? Exactly. I can plug in anything I want. So I will, I will write here that the exponential function has domain, all real numbers. We write it like this, or if you don't want to, we can write it like this. So this is domain of any exponential function, friendly, like polynomials, no headache, like the cube root, no headache. No restrictions. Never worry about the domain of the exponential function. But now I want to write the range. So let's take a look at the graphs. So this is the graph of the exponential, or this is the graph of another shape of exponential, and we want to identify the range. And that is always true for pure exponential function with no transformations on it. So what will you say? What is the range of this function? Um, the range is from 0 to infinity. That's it. So the range is 0 to infinity. But what do we know about inverse functions? Inverse um, function. Exactly. Thank you so much. Excellent. Great job. That's it. So then the log function has to be defined here and has to have range this. That's why it's the inverse. It takes this back where it came from. But this is not friendly. But what I call friendly, you know, I don't, this is what I call friendly. No headache. I don't have to think. It's not that I don't want to, but I'm saying we never have to worry about the exponential function, but we have to worry about the log function. So keep that in mind. So we're going to go back and just look at one example. So can anyone choose from 1 through 8? Can we do number 7? Seven? 7. The lucky 7. Let me copy it. Um, so this is f of x equals negative e to one third x. And they want us to find the domain and find the range and determine the y-intercept and I analyze if the function is increasing or decreasing. Perfect. So in order to find the y-intercept, what do I have to find? How do I start for the y-intercept? Make. Remember, this is the y-intercept somewhere here. I make. For any function, we do the same thing. In order to find the point on the y-axis, or the y-intercept, we make? Uh, make x0. Exactly. Awesome. So we have f of 0. How much is 1 third times 0? 0. Yes. How much is e to 0? 0. Oh, would it just be e? Any number raised to 0 is? Self. One. Very good. And I have to be correct. I have to write that a cannot be zero. Remember we talked about zero over zero as an indeterminate case. We talked about infinity over infinity as an indeterminate case. Zero raised to zero is another indeterminate case. So this is true forever but only if the base is not zero. 
If the base is zero, it's a totally different situation. So e to zero is one. One times negative one is negative one. So the, can anyone give us the ordered pair that is the y-intercept? It's zero negative one? Of course, zero negative one. Excellent. Good. So let's analyze piece by piece now because they want us, first of all, they want us the domain. Blindly, what is the domain of this function forever and always? And I don't have to think. Was it negative infinity to infinity? Absolutely, it's an exponential function defined everywhere. They want us to determine the y-intercept, they want us to determine the domain, they want us to find the range, and they want us to identify whether the function is increasing or the function is decreasing. So these are the, the uh, next two questions. So, so let's analyze piece by piece. So the base is a number greater than 1. Then I have the base raised to a power. I don't care about the power, right? One third x. So this must be an increasing situation. e to one third x. But there is a minus in front. What will the negative in front of a function do? This is like negative y. If this is y, this is negative y. Do we remember the transformations? What happens when we have negative in front of a function? What does that do? Does it make it an inverse? It makes it negative, right? Is that clear? All the y values will be negative. Is that okay? Yes? No? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Perfect. So then, when I multiply all these heights by a negative number, this is what I get. And this is the, the y-intercept right here. The zero negative one that we determined. Definitely. Perfect. Okay. So, range. Last question here. Can anyone give us the range? Um, it's zero to negative infinity. It's, yes, but we negative start, yes, zero. negative Three. infinity to zero. Excellent. Perfect. That's it. Let's go, go back. Going back. Where are you guys? Got it. Good. Now, if you remember a long time ago when we looked at the initial investment and compounded annually, monthly, daily, continue. And I said there is one more, but we have to wait till chapter two. And this is the one that we want to talk about. So interest compound con compounded continuously. We had the previous formula, if you remember, A equals P, 1 plus R over N to NT. But for continuously, in other words, every second, continue, continuously, compounded interest. We have a different formula. And the formula has E in it. So for this one, uh, I'm on page 5. It's A equals P E to R T. As you notice, because it's continuously, there is no N. Continuously. 
All the information is the same. All the uh, letters represent the same thing. Accumulated value. Principal, of course. Annual interest rate. And T, time in years. All, of, all are the same. So now let's choose an example. And let's apply the formula. An initial investment amount P, an annual interest rate R, and the time T are given. Find the future value of the investment when interest is compounded. We don't have to do annually, monthly, and daily. We've done that several times um, and continuously. And then we would like to find the doubling time. I'll explain what the doubling time is. So let's choose one from nine. Number 14. 14. Very good. Yes, ma'am. Is that what we said, 14? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Number 14. Very, very good. 1,500. Uh, interest rate 2.08% and t equals 12 years. So notice that, for example, when we are given months, we have to change this into 1.5 years. 18 months is 12 plus 6. In other words, 1 year plus a half, so 1.5, and this will be 0.5 years. Okay. Perfect, so let's plug it in. So we have A equals 1500. Um, I don't need really need parentheses here, I'm going to erase that, sorry. So E, there is no need. E, by the way, it's called, it's Euler's number. E, Euler's number. It's a mathematician, and they basically honored he honored him, and that's why they put E because he did he uh, discovered this number. Okay, it's two point seven eight dot dot dot. In case you you wonder, here it is. Second and E. Second and division symbol. Press enter. You will see seven one two eight. 7182 and so on and so forth. 2.7182818288. So this is an irrational number, and that's Euler's number, E. Okay, so E, and uh, the interest rate, remember, we cannot use percent, so it has to be 0 0.0208, and multiplied by 12 years. So I'm going to switch to the calculator on my computer now. Where are you guys? Okay, here you are. I have it ready for you. Okay, I was gonna show you this function that you picked or I picked, I don't remember. No, here it is. See? What I would like you to understand when you graph it with a graphing calculator, make sure that you understand that there is, it does not touch the x-axis. Please don't copy something like this. It's incorrect. Okay, so then we go to second and quit. Get out of there, and we have 1,500. Remember the second key and e to the x right here? Same key with its inverse function. And I like parentheses, so 0 0.0208, and multiply by 12 years, and I close and I press enter. So the 1500 changes into in 12 years from now. Let's see in what? 1925.27. We're talking about cents, so we have to use two decimal digits. And that is it. The 1500 in 12 years at this low rate of 2.08%, we are getting 1925.27 if we deposit 1500. Now, there is another part of this question. And where is my book? Here it is. Um, find the doubling time 
for the given interest rate. What it means, this is my starting point. I want my money to double. What does that mean? What is double? What is double? Um, two times 1500, which is 3000. Exactly. So they are asking us to find T. Okay, in the book they denoted by uppercase T. Fine, it doesn't matter. Lowercase or double uppercase is the same thing in this situation. They want us to find, I think it, I think they use, let me go back just a second. I think they use T. Okay, fine. Not a big deal. Good. So they want us to find what is the time needed to double our investment. So we start with the accumulated value, which now is 3,000 equals 1,500e. The rate they specify, the rate is the same, 0 0.0208 times t. This is what we want. We want to find t. This is an exponential equation. How do I solve it? What will be the first step? So um, what I would do is bring the zero point, what is it, zero point two?